Good evening, YouTube, all my friends, subscribers, first time viewers. We're going to cover a lot of ground. I've been watching these things, thinking about these things, researching these things, and I got a, a lot of two cents to put in on a lot of different topics. <clears throat> but they all run together. This is an older posting about our so-called leaders. So many ideas have already been put forth from different video makers and pundits on the news channels about what is going on here with this. This is titled, The Republican Leaders Mapping a Strategy to Derail Donald Trump. Okay, so I myself am sick and tired of hearing anything that has to do with these candidates, either the Democrat or the Republican, um, because it's all rigged. It's, it's only gotten to a point now where when you see talk like this we're gonna here's a guy in the front he's got the most so far votes but they're gonna derail him but his own party you would think you would think that in a normal world the guy that gets the most is the guy that they'll roll behind but we don't live in a normal world we live in a new world order controlled throughout the globe it's, it's the beast system. Most all the pieces are in place. So where do we go with this? What are they, what are they doing? They're, they're, they're not covertly behind the scenes anymore pulling the strings. That still goes on, of course. But now they're getting more overt and in the open where they're not caring whether the people know anymore that they are cheating, conniving, rigging, and so forth. So what, what the article it just goes on to tell you, what you've already heard for weeks now, is that uh, they have this idea of a, of a contested convention in which your so-called elected delegates can in a lot of the cases, vote for the candidate, you know, put their support behind the candidate of their choice. And you've even heard or seen, but maybe you haven't, but there has been interviews where it's been said openly on television that the people don't choose the nominee. And it's the delegates that choose the nominee. So they're openly telling you they don't care what you do, what you think, what you want. These little members in this circle of power are the ones that place them in there, and they already are selected. That's just something that they haven't actually spoken out loud now. And this is talking about this little section here about Mr. Tom Coburn. He's an Oki. And even this Oki says Trump needs to be stopped. And this is older. He did have a lead of 250 but it's, it's more now. And you hear about a delegate war. So the discussion that I'm making is that the whole system is rigged. I have watched these rallies, and it's disgusting. It's, it's blowing my mind is the better description. 
to see these people on both sides I haven't actually seen the Kasich supporters doing this, but I, I've seen the, the Cruz supporters arguing with the Trump people. And the things they do, the things they say and the way they act, they, they don't even seem like normal people. I mean, it's so juvenile, so childish, so ridiculous. He wants to do this. He wants to. He's not going to do that. He's a liar. You're a liar. Everybody's a liar. Everybody's out there just making a total ass out of themselves, arguing back and forth. And the elites are laughing when they see conduct and, and things like this going on and, th and hear the things that, that they say on the streets at these rallies and stuff. There's very little intelligent talk amongst those people attending, at least what they show. If you can't figure out that for the longest time everything has been fixed, then you've already lost. We've come too far now and let this get way too deep and out of hand to be able to, quote, fix it, unquote. It is broken, controlled, and we the people <clears throat> let it happen. Because we didn't do anything when all this began. We kept thinking everything would get better. We just got to vote another guy in. We, we didn't want to come to the hard, cold fact that we had our power taken from us. And only the illusion put forth to us that we still have some form of control now, there's a common denominator that I've noticed in all three of these Republican candidates. You have Kasich, Kasich, and he's a former Bush person. He was, he was in that little charade at the time. He likes to brag about it. I done this, I done that, blah, blah, blah. Well, Ted Cruz, he was also mixed up with the Bushes. And his wife was also even back in that day. So we're seeing some ties with at least two candidates. Tied in with the Bushes. Trump, he has money. People, let me tell you something. People with money, not all of them like each other, but they rub elbows from time to time. And he may have acted like, you know, Jeb Bush is stupid, blah, 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 when they were debating and whatnot. But you can bet your bottom dollar he thinks they're okay. What you say on screen is not what you say when the recorders are turned off and the cameras are turned off. This is all for show. We are the audience watching the production. Now, none of them stand up for nothing. Nothing that matters. You've not heard one candidate say, we're going to return our country back to the godly principles that pro made it prosper and receive the blessings of our Creator, our Father in Heaven. 
No. None of them said that. Trump, what Trump get asked? What's your favorite passage in the Bible? He didn't answer it. He evaded it. He just gave a generic, oh, this is such a swell book that there's so many good parts of it. I, you know, I really don't like one more than the other. Well, that's not an answer. That's an evasion. Cruz, he tries to act like he has faith, but it's all an act. Because as long as you have this man-made thing called separation of church and state, you got a problem. Comprendo? Now that might have been in our foundation, but we held the belief in our Creator and His teachings up on high. And that has been taken and put on the bottom rung now. What have we killed? Like 53 million precious unborn babies? Yep. And we got what? 50 million people on food stamps? So when Donald Trump says... I want to make America great again. I say it again. One man and whoever he puts around him in his little circle of corruption, even if they were honest, they could not make this entire nation great again by twisting, overturning, or initiating any new anything into this system without the blessing of Jesus and our Father in Heaven. If you don't have that okay, I'm with you from them, you're not going to make nothing great. People need to get that through their head. You know, quit buying into this lousy, stupid stuff that Trump says. He's saying what you wish could be true, knowing that it's not going to come true. All of them do the same thing. Lie to your face. News media included. Man, here's another little older one here. This kind of crap just boggles the mind. <clears throat> and, and I still say it's going to continue. It's going to grow. It's not going away. It's like it's like a damn infection that no antibiotic is working on. You see these so-called courts taking up these issues and allowing these rulings to go forth. We're talking about the, the old transgender bathroom argument. Now, have you ever heard of anything as stupid as this? One bathroom fits all? Have you ever heard of anything as stupid? And I got to call it what it is. Because everybody has two ears, and there's something in between it called a brain. And these people need to start using it. You have genetic code within your body, all you transgenders out there. And you are what your Father in Heaven designed you to be. You are not what you think you are or what you identify yourself as. Because when it comes down to the bottom line of your genetics, you will not escape what you've been created to be.
you will live in the illusion that you create for yourself as to what you think you want to be and live as, which is a false lie. It's just a lie to yourself and to everybody around you that you're friends and family. So the fact that they would make asinine laws like this to allow people that identify their sex as something other than what they genetically were born as is totally ridiculous. And it is spreading like wildfire. And I, I was going to talk about North Carolina specifically. You've seen many articles come out here <clears throat> recent about different performers. You know, your big, iconic celebrity performers. I'm not going to do my concert there. This is a despicable law down there. We will punish them. We will punish them for not embracing these type of thoughts and ideas. Now that that took me a little surprise when Bruce Springsteen did it. You know, I, I never knew he was twisted in that kind of way of thinking. <coughs> Pearl Jam, you know, they're like <clears throat> yesterday, so they're not such a big act anymore, but the fact that they even jumped on board, and there's been more, it's going to show you that something is terribly wrong in our country. You cannot cast a blind eye to these things and say, oh well, I don't have any problem with it. That's the way they want to live their lives. That's the way they feel. Who am I to say anything about it? They're not bothering me. Well, maybe somebody wants to identify themselves as a tree or a rock or maybe a bull. You know, bulls don't go to bathrooms, bulls take a crapola wherever they let it fly at. So maybe somebody comes to your yard and crapolos out in your yard because they identify themselves as a bull. You can be all right with that? I mean, where does this stop? That's my point. If you can identify a woman as a man instead, and vice versa, a man identify himself as a woman, where does it end? Is there an end? That some idiots can just identify themselves any way they want with anything they want and receive protection from the so called courts and judges. God paired Adam and Eve in the first marriage and told them to populate the earth, to be fruitful and multiply. That means have babies and start a population going, folks. He didn't say, hey, uh, how do you feel here? Do you, do you feel like a woman? Do you feel like a man? Uh, you know. So this is a kick in the teeth, not only to us, again, but our Father. The holy union of, between a man and a woman. Because you can try and say you're one or the other, identify that way, but it'll never work, will it? Because you still need normal, regular people to be able to donate something so that you can either have a laboratory baby 
for a surrogate mother having a baby, or you adopt a baby. You'll never get out of that. It'll never be any different for you. And that's another hang-up which you can't get past besides your own genetic code. Now this, I thought, was an interesting article. It's, it's pretty recent. About Russia possibly going to price their own oil. And maybe they would get international participation. And they want to create a system where the Russian oil is priced and traded in a fair and straightforward way, they say. To get the traders in on this idea, the Bank of Russia is preparing legislative amendments to grant non-Russian firms access to exchange-traded commodities and their derivatives. The initial futures contract will be worth a thousand barrels traded in U.S. dollars with a minimum delivery of 720,000 barrels to the Russian ports on the Baltic. They're not alone in this push to change global pricing. China has spent two decades trying to introduce its own oil contract, futures contact. You got Iran and Venezuela have also called for trading oil and other currencies in US dollars. We go to oil because this month marks one year since the, the initiation endorsed by our leaders and our Pharaoh in chief Obama in subservience to the kings of Saudi Arabia and princes for crushing our energy market and giving it all back to the king of Saudi Arabia and their family. It's all concocted, purposeful. So the crushing of this, at where I work, we're still down to four days a week, 32 hours a week, one solid year now. There was a recent article where Saudi Arabia, which I won't show the article, I'd have to look it up, I didn't get it out, <clears throat> spoke about how they were going to diversify themselves within the next four years, I believe it were to where they would run their economy not counting on income from oil. And they mentioned solar and wind and all this other garbage. And that is why it makes no sense, you see. If you, because, let's just face it, no countries are getting rich off of solar and wind energy production or the manufacture thereof of the products which are used in that. None. There ain't none of them to wave, wave a flag and say, look how much money we've made since we make this stuff and sell this stuff and use this stuff. It ain't happening. So the Saudis know they make all their money to speak of from oil. Like I said before, they're making money even though the price is way down from where it was 
a year and over a year ago. You've got a humongous glut because they've been producing so much since this was enacted, since they began their actions. A huge glut of oil sitting in tankers that can't be delivered. So they're all stacked up out in the water waiting their turn to dump it off because storage is full or near capacity. In the article, they said even though that they were going to diversify, it did not say they were going to decrease production. So you're going to continue to see the, the United, well, it'll affect the whole world, but I'm speaking of our country, the U.S. You're going to continue to see our markets, our producers, getting stepped on. Not here in, like I said, the scumbags in Washington and in the White House saying they're going to do anything about this. Not none. Isn't that an interesting thought? Knowing the thousands of jobs that have been lost because of the actions undertaken by the Saudis and endorsed by our own president behind the scenes and for his lack of action to counter that, to protect these jobs, and these industries. You're just not seeing it. You're not hearing it. Because it's allowed. It's what they want. You see this, this global warming lie. If they have this green thought that they keep smashing into your head, and that's what Hitler said, tell them the same lie over and over and over again, and sooner or later they're going to believe it. Well, gee, that's what they're doing to you. Figure it out. Sooner or later you're going to believe it. Look at how many believe it now, because they've been saying it over and over and over and over and over. Fossil fuel has to die in order for everything to be green. And when fossil fuel dies, then the dominance of some nations, such as ours, that were good producers of it, families made livings in that industry, they get crushed. And only a select few, like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, are going to be allowed to keep doing the fossil fuel. And that's the way it's going to roll. So you better grab your pants, cinch them up another notch on that belt. Because if things ain't got tight for you yet, it's gonna. Now, for weeks now, many, many videos have been made, many, many articles have been printed. So let's talk about these reproductions of the arch leading into the Temple of Baal. This one is going on to say there's some inaccuracies. So. Let's go through this if you haven't read this one before. 
It says the truth is that replicas from the arch were planned for London and New York. And that the New York project was shelved indefinitely as of early April. The false, they claim, is they will be full permanent and operational houses of worship. I never heard they were actually going to build temples. I only ever found it was the archway leading into the temple. Now we go through here. I realize that the headline sounds like it must be false, but it's actually supposedly true. The Temple of Baal or Bell was a famous landmark in Palmyra, Syria, and it got destroyed by ISIS. This is supposed to be an attempt to preserve history for cultural heritage to make these exact replicas ancient times child sacrifice by sexual orgies were common practices at the altars and now we're putting up a monument of worship to this false god okay They're all pretty well the same. Well, not all the same, but you get my drift. This one here, you know, simultaneous unveiling in New York. They may transport to London, London Arch there later or build another one. So what they do is they've made this, this out to be not only for cultural, historical, and artistic ideas. I've actually seen a couple of, well, more than a couple, but I've actually seen some videos that showed the, the 3D machinery actually carving these things out and making them. Now, these, these are not, in my humble opinion, portals placed all over the world. The portal maker, the gate breaker, the key maker is CERN. So they've already got that. These are symbolic, they're symbols. And they are again. Flipping the middle finger to our Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in heaven by placing these things there. Because they're already admittant. And you can look it up that human sacrifice and orgies and all that wickedness went on at this temple. So they're they're showing you a piece of of what is left over the, the archway after the temple was destroyed by ISIS. The archway was was still fairly intact. But they're showing you putting these things all over different countries, different cities within, they're, they're endorsing it. 
it doesn't matter if it's cultural, historical, or artistic representation, preservation, remembrance, or any other lame excuse. You're showing something that was totally opposite of how our Father would have us conduct ourselves. Are you saying, hey, here's the archway that everybody used to walk through to get to the temple to do those things? Well, why would you want to do that? Nothing good come out of doing those things. You're killing people. That's not good. You have an orgiastic sex, and I imagine there was probably some bisexual, homosexual sex going on within the orgy. So that's that's against the will of, of our Father. So all these things that were a part of it at that temple, these are the kind of remembrances that symbolize that type of conduct and who they worshipped, because it is all about worship. And that's what they're putting them out there for. They're, they're overtly showing who their allegiance is to. And in, in the ulti ultimate end, the real name is Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan, the lawless one. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. There is no truth in him. He is a deceiver. And they are showing their allegiance to him. And that is my take on these temples. I do not believe for one second they're portals. I do believe they are symbolic representations of their allegiance to whom they serve ultimately. And these guys, they got their power from whom they serve ultimately too. What's the suggestions for all this? The suggestion is the answer. We have to pray. We have to be interceders, intercessors. We have to intercede for lost, confused people with very confused beliefs and ideas. We have to pray for all the people of the world in all nations in all faith systems for what whoever they worship. If they're worshiping something other than the Father in heaven, and they're thinking what they're worshiping is the Father in heaven, and we're knowing it's not, we have to pray for them. That they come out of what they're into and find the Father, find Jesus and the Holy Spirit and allow them into their lives so they can help them. So they can bring them into their kingdom. My suggestion to all is to find the truth. Do you have time to find the truth? You work eight hours a day, you got to come home, fix up, or spend some time with the kids, spend some time with the wife, then you got to get some sleep, then you got to get up and do it all over again. In between all of those responsibilities and obligations, you must, it is imperative, 
You must make time for God. You need to go through everything daily. Maybe you can keep track of it as you're going through the day. That's the easiest way to do it. Be aware of what you're thinking. What have you said? What have you done? When you catch yourself thinking something wrong, saying something wrong, doing something wrong, get on it right there. You don't have to speak it out loud. He hears your thoughts too. Pray in your mind and ask for forgiveness for what you've done. And before you go to sleep at night, you think about your whole day. You think about all the things that you did wrong throughout that day. You tell our Father that you're sorry. You tell Jesus you're sorry. But you didn't mean to do any of it. And hopefully you didn't mean to do any and you ask Him to forgive it. And you ask Him to help you stay away from doing things like that again. But you'll, you'll probably mess up again. But you ask Him to help you mess up as few times as, as you can muster. you got to help Him out. And i got to do it all for you. It takes some cooperation from you. You have to do your part. Your part is putting forth the effort. Your part is realizing your shortcomings, your weaknesses, and becoming stronger against those weaknesses. And don't stay shut up. When you see somebody's doing something wrong, thinking something wrong, offer your thoughts. You have to stand against the evil. You can't keep your mouth shut all the time. That's not standing against anything. That's standing behind it. You want to face it. Let the evil know that you're not afraid of it. And that you're not putting up with it. That it's wrong. And you're going to call upon the highest authority to help out. I think we got a little while longer, but not a whole lot longer. I think with the situation of how our society is crumbling all over the world, but specifically where we live in America. It's, it's definitely crumbling, folks. The morals, the values, evil and the things of it are being now endorsed as being okay. And the godly things, the good things, the right things, the real things, are being mocked and looked down upon, spoken of as old, outdated ways of thinking that need to be changed, thrown away, updated, what have you, but brought into this 21st century in the year 2016. And what does it say? It says, Woe to those that call evil good and good evil and bitter sweet. Everything's upside down. Everything's inside out. Wrong is right, right is wrong. And that is Satan's way. To get you to think wrong, 
act wrong, live wrong, and be wrong. When you do all the wrong things and you don't see nothing wrong with any of them, you're going to keep doing them. And then when it comes time for your judgment, I'm not your judge and I do not condemn you. I'm just saying when it comes time for your judgment, you're going to have to <clears throat> deal with the outcome. And the scumbag from hell is going to be laughing all the way for all those people that he fooled. This is serious business. This is it just an example. Like I said, it's just one of many examples. And they're getting to your kids at four or five or six years old now. They're getting into their minds about this kind of crap. And you need to get a hold of it, parents out there. You need to get a hold of it and wipe that kind of crap out of your kids' minds, what these schools are trying to put in there regarding same-sex relations and gender identification. They're grabbing your kids and they're programming them. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to deprogram them? Teach them right ways? Or are you going to let a satanic society raise your kid for you and teach them all the wrong ways? We don't turn this ship around right now. I mean, right now. Not next month, the month after next year, we'll wait on this election. No, it has to start this minute. All the people out there have to start it now. If we don't turn it around, history shows that our Father gives us so much time to come back to doing His will. But sooner or later, if you don't, He doesn't have a choice left. He has to issue some kind of discipline. And, and sometimes that discipline can be mighty harsh. And as long as these kind of things keep going, as long as we keep killing the babies, as long as we keep killing overseas in wars, as long as we have a leader at the top that works against our Father, we're in for some serious punishment. So say your prayers, get right with our Father. With Jesus and hold on to your hat because I got a good feeling the next several months things are just going to get rougher so prepare yourselves for some very bumpy times in more ways than one